Hi, I'm Jim Bamburak. I'm uh, a provincial geologist uh, with the province of Manitoba. And we're uh, at the uh, uh, head trail uh, for the Spirit uh, Sands uh, uh, self-guiding trail in uh, Spruce Woods Provincial Park. Uh, what we're going to do is leave the parking lot and uh, walk about uh, one and a half kilometers over to the face of the uh, uh, sand dunes, uh, which is outlined uh, with this, this hatchard line that you can see in the, uh, on this uh, photograph. After uh, we've uh, done some uh, investigations around the uh, face of the sand dunes, we're going to continue on uh, for another uh, two kilometers down to the Devil's uh, Punch Bowl, which is not too far from the uh, Cinnaboyne River. We're standing in the middle of an interpretive center where they show how the formation of the Spirit Sands at uh, Spruce Woods Provincial Park uh, came to be. With the melting of the uh, ice sheets uh, over North America, this was one of the places where the sand uh, uh, was carried by rivers that were flowing, uh, the ancestral uh, Assiniboine River in this case, and there was a huge deltaic area that was uh, uh, the outflow of that particular mass of the ice. And it carried silt and sands to form uh, this very, very interesting place to come and visit. In the background behind me, you can see the bare sand hills. Uh, some would say bald sand hills. But that contrasts quite uh, directly with what we see uh, along the trail to this point where all of the sand dunes are essentially uh, in place uh, by the fact that they're vegetated. Uh, they have uh, totally uh, been stabilized to the point where they're not moving. You could even almost say that they're fossil sand dunes. Uh, but uh, directly behind us, uh, there is no vegetation on top of those uh, bare sand hills. And uh, although uh, they uh, appear to be almost a desert environment, uh, we really don't have uh, true desert in southern Manitoba. I'm standing on the top of one of these bare sand dunes. I just came up a little uh, ladder uh, made out of wood uh, from the base of this sand dune. It's about uh, 30 to 40 feet high. Uh, there's very little vegetation, uh, just some plants off to my uh, right over here that have managed to uh, get a uh, foothold in the sand dune. But uh, you get the feeling it wouldn't take much for the sand dune to keep on creeping and start uh, moving uh, towards the southeast and eventually cover the growing plants uh, that you see at the base of the sand dune. So uh, these sand dunes are migrating and uh, assuming uh, uh, climate change, if uh, the climate of the earth is warming, uh, these sand dunes should become more and more extensive through time. Anyways, behind me is uh, a great big uh, field full of sand dunes, uh, which you'll uh, be able to see uh, in a few minutes. Now I'm standing in a little depression, a bowl-shaped depression on top of the sand dune, and you can see ripple marks in the sand in front of me, right next to my footsteps. Now one thing you can be sure, my footsteps are not going to be here long with this wind that's blowing today. It will end up disappearing and uh, nobody will ever know that I've been here uh, in a day or so, uh, at the longest. Anyways, the ripples are uh, in some cases shown to be very, very distinctive uh, because uh, there is a separation of heavy grains and light grains of sand. The light grains of sand are this uh, yellowish uh, uh, colored uh, sand grains, but the heavy minerals are the dark, almost black uh, grains. And the black grains uh, form most of the troughs that you see uh, in the sand uh, uh, ripple marks. So these are uh, wind ripples as opposed to uh, wave ripples or uh, uh, stream ripples that you might see in a river or a lake. 
I'm standing in the middle of what was at one time a sand-free area between sand dunes that we see today. Directly ahead of me, over to uh, the southeast, is a large tree that one time was growing without any sand around it. However, if you look closely at the base of that tree, you can see that it has been totally covered over by sand. And actually the tree now is keeping the sand from being uh, drifted away further towards the southeast. So that tree again was at one time sand free. The sand dunes have moved towards it, totally enveloped it. The entire tree now is totally surrounded by sand at the base. And uh, now it's holding the sand in place. I'm sitting in the middle of a little bowl-shaped depression, a small one this time, uh, on top of a large sand dune. And uh, directly in front of me here is a soil profile where you can see vegetation has been established on the sand. And uh, the roots of the uh, plants are holding all of the sand in place and preventing further migration of the sand. However, below the level of the roots, roughly about through here, you can see sort of an indentation. It's very soft, what we would call uh, in geology recessive, and the sand is actually being winnowed away. And you can see the sand down in the bottom here, unconsolidated sand, and this sand is constantly moving. It is always being carried by the wind and is moving further and further away from where I'm sitting and uh, directly behind me are huge sand hills and they're migrating constantly. So this sand is moving and as it's being deposited, it's grain by grain. Uh, it takes a, a tremendously long period of time for it to build up to a large accumulation. Here it's only about a foot thick, but it's well bedded. You can actually see the bedding planes. The light and dark minerals are uh, in through here and uh, it's uh, generally horizontal uh, at this particular place. And I'm being sandblasted because the wind is blowing right now. So uh, I can definitely swear to the fact that the sand is moving. There, there is no doubt about that. But anyways, that. there's an established soil profile. Someday, probably as this gets undercut uh, completely and uh, the sand gets removed, uh, this will collapse and it will actually uh, uh, become a part of the uh, vegetated material like you see in the bottom here. Uh, it'll hold the sand for a while, but eventually the sand will win out. I was reading in a uh, little uh, uh, poster uh, in the uh, uh, shelter down below, they uh, felt that uh, the sand actually was going to lose the battle to the vegetation because we get so much uh, moisture more than a true desert area. So uh, the sand uh, in uh, the Assiniboine Delta occupies a very small area of uh, bare sand as compared to what it uh, was at the end of the last uh, glaciation uh, when uh, Glacial Lake Agassiz uh, was in place and uh, the Assiniboine Delta was built into uh, Glacial Lake Agassiz. So uh, things are definitely uh, uh, shrinking uh, sand-wise but again, coming back to what I said earlier, if there's uh, truth to the global warming process, uh, maybe the sand will ultimately win out. Yeah, this is quite impossible to believe. There goes my hat. Yeah, action shot. This is unbelievable. Standing on top of a sand dune and being peppered around by sand grains. You can see how they're blowing here. Unbelievable. Just right off my head. Nothing to it. Quite incredible. Dust in the wind, as they say. Oh, wow, what a wonderful life. <laughs>